Matthew chapter 5. 5, 6, and 7 is your modernist Bible. Your liberal. They love this part of the Bible. And remember, from 424, Judea, Jerusalem, Jordan. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came with him. All right, that's Peter, Andrew, James, and John so far. Jewish men, Jewish people, Jewish Savior. If there's any Gentiles, they're, they're just there. They're not in the picture. I came onto my own. And he's talking about a kingdom. Repent for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. He's speaking to a Jewish crowd of people. Matthew is for a Jewish king, Jesus. There's no Gentile. It has nothing to do with the Gentile. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Put the in spirit in there, not just the poor. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Look at that, there's that. Your spirit is poor. You're humble. You're broken. What do you get? You get the kingdom of heaven. Blessed, happy are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Everyone that mourns? Really? Everyone. That goes to everybody. They'll be weeping and gnashing teeth. Those that go to hell. So it can't be everybody. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Who gets the earth? Who has been promised the earth? Jewish, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. Oh, after righteousness. You got to want to seek God's righteousness. He's right there talking to them. My righteousness is the one that's speaking. For they shall be filled. And that's true any age. You seek after God and what God expects from you and what God wants from you and try to do it. And then you confess the blood when you sin. You shall be filled with the fruit of the Spirit. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, not salvation. They'll get mercy at judgment, but not salvation. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Well, God's the Spirit. No man has seen God at any time. Maybe in the eternal world, after sin has been put into the lake of fire, those that rebel against God in the lake of fire, and those we've been pure, but the bride of Christ into New Jerusalem, the Jews get the new earth and Gentiles get the new heavens. Maybe the Trinity will form itself that we will see God. I don't know. God is a spirit right now. But it says, shall see God. By the way, the one who's speaking is God. God in the flesh. And they're looking at him. Pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. The United Nations. They've done everything but keep peace. For they shall be called the children of God. I'm called a child of God by the Holy Spirit through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not a peacemaker. Man, I cause all kinds of destruction. I cause all kinds of anger. I get people upset everything. I open up my mouth and do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. I got people upset with me all the time. Yet I'm a child of God. I'm a son of the king. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, I don't want to be proud. I don't want to mess with the word of God, but you can have the kingdom of heaven. I'm getting New Jerusalem. That's much better. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and that scorn you verbally. 
and persecute you and shout all manner of evil against you falsely false witness for my sake for the sake of Jesus Christ you're persecuted happy are you rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven here are eternal rewards it doesn't say the kingdom of heaven it says in heaven notice that persecution in any age because of God because of Jesus Christ you'll get a eternal reward so when somebody comes up to you and says you're tacky or you're not doing it right that's not whatever they do to persecute you and lie against you and revile you scornly verbally abuse you just smile and say you know what say to yourself, I'm getting a crown because of this idiot I'm getting a crown so they persecuted they the prophets which were before you so this is truth in any age if you suffer you'll suffer like the prophets did. and some of the prophets were killed and these would be the Jewish prophets now get it the Old Testament ye the Jews are the salt of the earth we're not earthly we're not we're our kingdom our homes is a heavenly home New Jerusalem salt can be used as a seasoning and as medication it can also be death in the land for crops it can also melt ice but if the salt had lost its savor its flavor its usefulness wherein shall it be salted can you resalt salt it is therefore good for nothing you, you can't resalt salt nothing you can do but to be cat but be cast out thrown away and to be trodden under foot of men people just walk over and does no good so you're not to lose your savior not to lose your saltiness if you do you're no good and you can't get it back you're the light of the world Jews ye a city a city of refuge I'm thinking a city is set on a hill cannot be hid there it is. Look at that place up there. The city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. He doesn't want you to hide. He wants you to be bright. He wants everyone to see you. Early lighthouses were this. They weren't towers. They were places up on mountains, up on cliffs with a light. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Now it's funny because if you look at the, de the definition, it's a weight or measure. But I'm thinking like a bushel, uh, you know, something like you put your clothes in. But on a candlestick, you don't hide your light. You don't light it and put a bowl over it. It's for it to be seen for all the world. Everyone in the room to get you around, to help you. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Some people have a light and they cover it up like Gideon did. You know, he, they had the light and they put a, a, a picture over it. Well, who's going to see that? you got to break your picture and let everyone see the light and get the victory of the Lord. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Now, look at that quoting. That's quoted today. To see your good works. See, look what I'm doing. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. See the good works I'm doing? But... but you're not glorifying the Father. They just see you as somebody who's good. They may not even know it's for Jesus Christ. They just may think you're a goody teach you. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. 48 prophecies are going to be fulfilled when Jesus ascends up to the Father in Acts chapter 2. There are yet more prophecies to be fulfilled by Jesus with the tribulation, with the rapture, with the second coming, with the millennium, with the, the great white throne judgment, with the he new heavens, the new earth. There's a lot more prophecies. 
And Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have come to fulfill all of them. He has a meeting with Moses. He has a meeting with Elijah. Has everything been all set before I go to that cross? Because I don't want to upset them. I don't want to I don't want to not do what has been written about me. I want to make sure it's all fulfilled. For verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass one jot. That's the smallest letter at the 22 Hebrew letters. So this is the inerrancy of the letters of the word. Or one tittle. It's an extension line on a Hebrew letter. About if that letter looks like another letter, I guess that this will make it more for. I don't know anything about the Hebrew language, but this is this is a jot and tittle of the Hebrew language. Shall no shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. So Jesus is going to do every little jot and every little tittle. He's going to dot his eyes and cross his teeth. And it will be all fulfilled. Jesus just told us 100% prophecy or no prophecy at all. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. And shall teach men so. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Well look at that. Here are people of false doctrine teaching and they're called, they are in the kingdom of heaven. And they're the least. But whosoever shall do and teach them the commandments, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. John the Baptist was called the greatest. Because he was teaching, he was preaching, he was doing his preaching, he was doing his teaching, and he was showing the people how to do. And all his teachings were of God and not man. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Now look, he's giving them a compliment. Yeah, the Pharisees and scribes, man, they are just right. They are obeying everything. You better be above that. How do you be above the righteousness of a scribe or Pharisee? You have the righteousness of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. When you have, I have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It's not my righteousness. It's the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And there is no other righteousness but that that is of Jesus. And that's above the scribes and Pharisees. Which is higher than, Jesus Christ is higher than them. He shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, I go in by the gospel. Kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven. That's Jewish. It's a Jewish stew. It's a stew, Jewish stew that has no pork. It's a Jewish stew that has no lobster, clams, shellfish, or crabs. Because that's not, that's not Jewish. That's been forbidden by the Jews. There's no sausage in this stew. It is all the dietary needs of the Jewish man or woman. No Gentile. Matthew is the king of the Jews. Speaking to the Jews. He has not rejected the Jewish people yet. They're still listening. They're, 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 they're tagging on him right now. You have heard that it was said by them of the old time. Thou shalt not kill. That's a commandment. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. The judgment. Great white throne judgment. The judgment. But I say unto you, Jesus speaking, that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of judgment. Oh, wait a minute. I, I skipped three words, didn't I? Without a cause is removed from many modern Bibles. 
It will read, with his brother shall be in danger of judgment. Without a cause, it's not in many modern Bibles. Did you know Jesus got angry? You know, he made a whip one time and started knocking over. Wouldn't you say that was angry? So, some modern Bibles, by removing without a cause, Jesus shall be in danger of the judgment. Because he got angry. You better be careful. If, if your Bible's without a cause that you're reading this right now, you need to go out and get a King James Bible and throw the one you got in the garbage. Because Jesus did get did get angry, um, and it's removed from Bibles. So without a cause, you have no reason to be angry with with your brother. Shall be in danger of judgment. Whosoever shall say to his brother, "Reka, worthless," shall be in danger of the council. Just saying, just calling somebody Reka, you worthless. John the Baptist is calling him, you vipers. <laughs> what do you say? He says, you viper. Or where am I? Ministry of John the Baptist. You generation of vipers. According to this, if there was no cause, he'd be in danger of the council. He's in jail because he told the king that that woman that he's with is fornication and adultery. Shall be in danger to counsel, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Now that's not the church age. Because I can go on the street with the book of Psalms say the fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Am I going to hell by that? Well, you can't put 22 on this age. When you're dealing with the Jews and dealing with the kingdom, you better behave yourself, and if you don't behave yourself, you better have a reason. You better have a good reason why you're calling him worthless. You better have a good reason why you're angry. You better have a great reason why you're going to call that guy a fool. And that fool that you call him, it better match all the book of Proverbs. Because Proverbs tells us exactly who the fool is. Now, would you like to be under the law? Have you ever mouthed, you deal with somebody, somebody, just ever mouthed this to yourself? That guy's a fool. Thank God we don't go to hell because of it. See, we're in a different dispensation. We're in a different time. Different people who have the law that we just, Jesus said, I'm not going to break the law. I'm going to go fill the law. All right? So don't get angry. Don't call someone worthless. That's the law. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, a sacrifice, a lamb, a bull, a goat, your first fruits, and there remembers that thy brother has aught against thee. You got a problem with your brother, a Jew. Leave there thy gift before the altar at the temple. Go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother. Get things right with your brother. Your fellow Jew. Talking to Jews. And then come and offer thy gift. Don't come offering something to God when you've got a problem with a fellow brother. Agree with thy adversary quickly. While thou art in the way with him. Lee said, any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge. And this is what be an earthly judge. And the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence a prison, till thou hast paid the utmost farthing. You're going to get, if it's 30 years, you're going to get 30 years. You won't be paroled. If there's an offense, somebody you offended, and whatever that judge says is the time you're going to serve that time. You better go to that adversary and say, hey, let's get things right. What do I need to get things right? You see, you're making your walk and your conduct correct and proper and being perfect before God. For God is holy. Be ye holy. Got it? 
This is the law. This is living under the law. Jesus is bringing them back to the law right now because there's no death, there's no burial, there's no resurrection. Clean up your lives. You've heard it said by them of the old time, the law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay, that's one of the big ten commandments. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, have committed adultery with her, with her, already in his heart. So he's saying, listen, adultery is not just physical. It can be thoughtful. That did not sound right. Thinking about it. And with pornography. Pornography causes adultery. And that woman who's on those pages, that woman who's on the screen, is being accounted for by the charge of adultery every time a man thinks about her. And they don't even know it. If that right eye offend thee, you got a problem with your right eye? With sin? With sin. Now, nowhere does Paul say to do this. Pluck it out. I don't think Jesus really, I don't think this is to be taken literal, but this is quite a statement. Pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members, your body members, should perish. And not that the whole body shall be cast into hell. In the law, if you killed somebody or committed adultery, there was no offering. So he's saying, listen, you pop that eyeball out. If thy right hand offend thee, you're going to sin with your right hand. Cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. That's a salvation by works. I better cut off my arm so I can be saved and not sin. And deal with a Jehovah Witness on this one. If there's no hell, why would Jesus say it'd be better for you to pluck out your eyeball or cut off your hand? If it will stop you in the time that we're reading right now, 30 AD, 31 AD, 32 AD, while Jesus is talking and preaching, it'd be better for you to cut off that body member than go off to the hell. If there's no hell, why would Jesus say that? And then people say, Jesus never spoke about hell. Look. He just said hell fire 22. Wait, wait a minute. He just he was just baptized in four. No, two. Three, he's baptized. Chapter three, he's baptized. Chapter four, he's led off in the desert for 40 days, tempted of Satan. He comes down off the mountain. He, he's going through the area. He's repent for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. He picks out four of his first disciples, goes up to a mountain. His disciples come up to him. People come up to him. He's preaching this modernistic Bible message, chapter five, and they say he never preached hell. Hellfire, hell, hell. He preached hell from the beginning of his ministry. And it's so serious about hell. Don't you call a man a fool or pluck out that eyeball and cut off that hand. That's serious. Do whatever it can to prevent yourself from going to hell. And that's not the church age. Church age is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and your sins are put under the blood. And if you still got sins, they're, they're burnt away as works at the judgment seat of Christ, but you are saved. It has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a right of divorcement. That's in the Old Testament. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. 
He's just going with the law. He's, he's stretching the law more. These Pharisees, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. All right, these Pharisees, they weren't committing no sins. They were doing what the Bible said. They were not doing adultery, but they would look at that woman like, Jesus, that's adultery. They were stealing money from the people. Jesus said to those Pharisees, you better cut off that hand. They were eyeing the people. Remember that if Jesus, if Jesus knew that woman was a sinner, you better cut out that eye. He's addressing the crowd that these Pharisees and scribes are sinners. The only hope you got is a righteousness that's above them. And that is Jesus Christ who's talking to them. You have heard it been said by them of the old time. The law. Thou shalt not forswear thyself. Even Solomon wrote about this. But shall perform unto the Lord thy oaths. You make an oath, you're supposed to keep those oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, by, neither by heavens, my heavens. There's an old one used to be you. For it, it is God's throne. Neither by the earth, my lands, was a famous one. For it is his footstool. The earth, Mother Earth is a place where God, oh, what a day I had today. I just to put my feet up on the earth. Thank God God don't have smelly feet. But that's what God thinks of the earth. That's his footstool. It's his footstool. His asset. Neither by Jerusalem. For it is the city of the great king, capital K. What's missing when he's talking to these Jews on this mountain? There is no king. They've been gone when they went off into captivity. There hasn't been no king. But there he is sitting on the mountain talking to them. Even the Magi king, the king of the Jews, where is he? Neither shall thou swear by thy head. That's what's on top of your shoulders. Keeps your ears from sucking in. Because thou cannot make one hair white or black. Well, see, I dye my hair. And eventually, what will come out? The dye will come out, and then new hair will come out, and it won't be the color that you dyed. And notice what he said, white or black. Jews have black hair. You know what Jesus was? He was a Jew. You know what color his hair was? It was black. Some places I think it says raven black. But let your communication be yay, yay, nay, nay. Did you do it? Yes, I did. Did you do it? No, I didn't. Did you do it? Well, you know. Well, you know is, is what Jesus says not to do. Say yes or no. For whatsoever is more than the than these cometh out. Let me try it again. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. There's only two answers for a question. Yes or no. Everything else is evil. Jesus said that. There's no room for excuse. If your parents come to you, did you take that cookie? There's only two answers. One of them's right and one of them's wrong. Anything else is evil. As far as the question. Did you sell that guy a, a, a car that was well running and well worth the money? Yes or no? Did you fulfill all your campaign promises? Yes or no? Can we have your email? Yes or no? Did you do the job I, I told you to do? Yes or no? You have heard that it had been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. Exodus 21-24, Leviticus 24-20, Deuteronomy 19-21. But I say unto you, God, Jesus, that ye resist not evil. 
But whosoever shall smite thee in the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Now, eye for eye. You gave me a bruise on my arm. Let me see your arm so I can give you a bruise. You knocked my tooth out. Let me knock your tooth out. I'm blind because of what you did. Now let me make you blind. And Jesus says, no, that's it. What Jesus is saying is people will do wrong. Forgive them. Jesus was smitten upon the right cheek. Upon his whole body. He didn't punch them back. He didn't take a crown of the thorns and put it on the soldiers' heads, did he? He just let them do what they had to do to him. Jesus is living what we are reading. 100%. I'm not able to do all this. No way can I do what I've read and going to read the next few chapters. I cannot fulfill all this. I need 1 John 1 9. I need to plead the blood of Jesus Christ and for God to be faithful to forgive me because I am absolutely a sinner by what I've been reading. Over and over and over, everything I've read, I've sinned so far what we read. I cannot do this. I would be without the grace and mercy and the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'd be in hell when I die. No way. Thank God for mercy. Thank God for grace. If a man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him ha let him have thy coat also. You give him more than what he asked for. Where is that today in the, in the law court? You sue a corporation for a million dollars. Oh, a million? Let us give you three million. No, it don't happen. You know what Paul says about the law court? For for Christians and Christians, don't even bother go. Just take it off as a write-off. Don't even bother. Take the loss. Why should you take your matter to, before an unsaved judge? And if you do have a matter to be judged, let it be taken among the church and let the most simplest person in the church be the judge thereof. Whosoever shall compile thee to go a mile go with him twain twice Jesus walked himself to Calvary verse 39 Jesus was smitten he lived that verse verse 40 he let them have their clothes and put him on the cross naked while they shot dice or whatever for his for his coat and verse 41 he walked to Calvary Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. <coughs> Somebody comes up to you, can I have something? Can I borrow something? You give it to him. That's what he's saying. And Jesus, through his entire life ministry, people would ask him for something, and he would give them. So what Jesus is preaching here is something he's going to live and do. You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Many people want that one. Woohoo! But I say unto you, Romans 12, 19, Love your enemies. Bless them. Happy. Make them happy. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Again, that's something that Jesus Christ done. After all Judas did, he comes to him in the garden and he says, Friend, I believe had Judas repented right there instead of going to the priest and threw the money to Jesus, I believe Jesus would have saved him. But he didn't. I wonder if any, any of those Roman soldiers later that got saved. After all what they've done to Jesus. You think, oh, because you beat me, I'm not going to save you? Because you took my sandals when I was on the ground, I'm not going to save you? I don't think so. I think any of those soldiers later believed on the Lord Jesus Christ got saved. I believe Jesus saved them. That ye may be the children of your father I am the child of God which is in heaven 
for he maketh his son Ooh. Jesus said that that son belongs to God to rise on the evil and on the good so God blesses the wicked by giving them the son and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust God blesses the unjust by giving them rain for their crops And it also tells us by Jesus Christ, who is God, the Son of God, our Savior, that God controls the weather. God makes the sun come up in the morning. That's by Jesus. For There's coming a day for the Jews. Jesus is saying that because there's coming a day for the Jews in the world that the sun is not going to come up one day. There's coming a time in the tribulation that there will be no rain. There'll be a drought. For if you love them which love you, well, watch this. What reward have you? You mean you can get a reward by somebody who hates you and treating them nice? How's that for a reward? For a Christian, if he goes before the judgment seat of Christ and he's treated people who mistreated him, if he treated him correctly, you think that's going to go through fire and come out wood, hay, or stubble? No. He'll come out as gold, silver, or precious stone because you've done right. See, you can apply some of this to the Christian, but not all of it. Some of these are great principles. Don't be looking at women you shouldn't be looking at. That's a great principle. Do not steal. That's a great principle. Don't commit adultery. That's a great principle. Somebody sues you and they take something. Well, give them something else. But if I stand in the street corner and someone comes up to me, smacks me across the face, I'm not going to say, well, here, hit me on this side. The Bible, Bible proclaims we're, we are not to be foolish. And if I were to say, oh, you're supposed to hit me on the right cheek, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, I'd be misquoting that verse. Because that does not apply to me. The principle I would get out of that verse is somebody comes up to me because I'm persecuted because of Jesus, verses 44. All right, just take the beating like Jesus took the beating and just walk away. Don't retaliate. Don't throw back words. Just, well, okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, I didn't beat the guy up. Thank you, Lord, I didn't cuss him out. Thank you, Lord, I didn't get angry. And I would have cause to be angry if somebody came up and slapped me. But endurance, long-suffering, the fruits of the Spirit, peace. That's what Paul teaches a Christian to do. They're going to beat Jesus and he's going to allow them to do it. And they're going to beat him some more. He's going to allow them to do it. And they're going to give him not one nail. They're going to give him two nails for his hands. And they're going to put nails in his feet. Do not even the publicans, the worst kind of people in the Bible. Publicans. The same. Even Jesus says the publicans are the worst people. Look at that. They're the most hated people in the Bible. And even Jesus says it. And if ye salute your brethren, that would be, hello, how you doing? Only. If you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? There may be people you know who won't even say anything to you. They'll just walk right by. They always. Oh, it's not that they didn't see you that time where they got things on their mind. I understand that. I mean, when I go to church, somebody you know just by chance doesn't say hello to me. All right, something else. They got something that doesn't bother. But when you're just constantly, you don't want to say anything to me. And I see you go off and befriend some other people. And that you're no worse than a publican. And Jesus said that's wrong. Be ye therefore perfect. Look at that. 
even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now, perfect is never sinless. It means you strive for the best you can be. Yet Jesus Christ, the one who's speaking, fulfills everything here 100% and is perfect. He's our example. And with the conduct that Jesus is teaching in chapter 5, things are going to happen to you. Don't give in. Don't fall in. Come out strong. Watch your body. Keep your body under control. And then when you are assaulted by people, forgive them. Help them. And there'll be a reward. Be like your Father in heaven. And the thing is, what would Jesus do is a proper statement. In the situation you're in, what would Jesus do? I know they use it for all kinds of garbage and, and making bracelets so you can make money. That, but what would Jesus do in the situation that you're in? If your family retaliated against you, what did, what did Jesus do with his family? Okay, fine, good, go. They don't want you. All right, fine, goodbye. See, that's what Jesus done. We gotta watch our outward and our inward conduct as Christians to be as perfect we can. And thank God we got First John one nine. So when we are not perfect and we have sinned against the Lord, but thank God we're not under the law. I won't have to poke my eyeball out. That's something that David should have done. Didn't you know that? David should have plucked out that eyeball that saw. Going poke them out so I can't see her no more. <laughs>